Hi, I'm Dr. Mina Bonsell. I'm a hepatologist at Mount Sinai, and I'm currently the director of the NASH Center of Excellence. A lot of patients are told that they have fatty liver disease, either by their primary care doctor or even by a radiologist who happens to be doing an ultrasound and sees that there is fat in the liver. But really, fatty liver disease can be considered part of a spectrum of what is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or NAFLD. NAFLD is really a spectrum, and it's defined by having fat in at least 5% of your hepatocytes. And then in some people, that fat stimulates inflammation and scarring of the liver, or the more progressive form of NAFLD, which is called NASH, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. Why the term non-alcoholic? Because initially when this disease was um, discovered or discussed, it looked like alcohol-related liver disease. So alcohol also causes fat in the liver, but when patients don't drink, and they're not taking medications that cause fat to accumulate in the liver, thus it is called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. The prevalence of NAFLD in the general population is about 25%. If, however, you have diabetes, you're obese, you have HIV, then you are at increased risk of having NAFLD or NASH. Your primary care doctor, or really any doctor, can, do, can calculate a simple score called a FIB4 score. That is based on four variables, your age, your platelet count, your AST and your ALT, which are liver enzymes. And these are routine numbers that they would have, so it's not any additional blood test. That then creates a score and that score, the FIB4 score, is very good at ruling out significant liver disease. So if your FIB4 score is low, you can feel relatively confident in most cases that you don't have cirrhosis or advanced liver disease. However, it's not very good at ruling in lower levels of that disease. So it's good as a rule out, but not necessarily as a rule in. Once that score is calculated, if you have a very low score, you have a low likelihood of having significant scarring of the liver. It's important to note that with fatty liver disease, the most important thing is the amount of scar you have. A lot of people have fat in their liver, but it only matters if that fat in an individual person is creating scar, because scar over time accumulates and causes cirrhosis. So the FIB4 score is a way to say, hey, do you have significant fibrosis? So if your FIB4 score is low, then the likelihood of you having significant fibrosis is low. If it's very high, then you should be referred to a hepatologist for further evaluation. And if you're somewhere in between, that means that you need some additional assessment. The most typical thing that we do is something called a fiber scan, which measures the stiffness of your liver. It is a simple test that's available in, in hepatology, uh, hepatologist offices, and we here at Mount Sinai have quite a number of them at various satellite locations. But what the machine does is essentially send a pressure wave through your liver, and it measures how fast the wave propagates. If your liver is nice and soft, the wave goes slow. If your liver is stiff because of that scarring and inflammation, it goes much faster. And so that will tell us in, an, in, in you, in an individual person, is the fat causing your liver to be stiff, which is a reflection of inflammation and scarring. Fibrosis is the most important determinant of clinical outcomes in fatty liver disease. So fibrosis or scarring are the most important determinants of clinical outcomes in patients with fatty liver disease. So you want to know what your level of scarring is. When you have any liver injury, the liver responds by laying down scar. Just as if you cut your hand, you would develop a scar. If the injury is repetitive and continual, 
the liver continues to lay down scar. That scar keeps accumulating over time, ultimately leading to cirrhosis. Cirrhosis is when you have so much scar that's developed that you form round nodules in your liver. And it's really just a natural wound healing response that has just been pushed to the limit. If you're diagnosed with fatty liver, the most important thing to understand is in you, is that fatty liver causing injury, inflammation, and fibrosis or scarring? Many people have fat in their liver, and it is a very complex problem, process where there are genetic determinants, environmental factors, the other comor uh, co uh, conditions you may have, like diabetes or obesity. And so in an individual person, that fat may promote scarring uh, and ultimately cirrhosis. So if you're told you have fatty liver, the most important thing you should know is, do I have scar? Is the fat causing a problem in me? And we can do that by calculating the FIB4 score and doing an assessment of liver stiffness, the fiber scan. Anyone can develop fatty liver disease. However, those with diabetes, obesity, HIV, are at an increased risk for having fatty liver disease. Also, those with metabolic syndrome are at increased risk for having fatty liver disease. Metabolic syndrome is defined by things like prediabetes, having a little excess weight around the waist or central adiposity, uh, high triglycerides, low HDL, the good cholesterol, or high blood pressure. When patients are referred to us for fatty liver disease, first we wanna confirm that that is the diagnosis. It's very important to make sure that there are no other concomitant liver diseases that would have a completely different treatment course. Next, we wanna assess in you, how much is that fat causing inflammation and fibrosis? So we need to assess the impact of that fat in your liver. Once we've established and risk stratified you, we want to obviously have a treatment plan. The most important thing for treatment of fatty liver disease is exercise, weight loss. If you lose 10% of your body weight, that has been shown to uh, cause fibrosis regression or decrease in that scar. We recommend a Mediterranean diet. We recommend black coffee. Yes, actually black coffee is protective for the liver. So if you enjoy coffee, a couple of cups a day, have at it. The um, other things that we'll do then is if you have significant scar in the liver, we wanna see if you might be eligible for one of our many clinical trials. We have at least 10 active clinical trials for patients with various uh, levels of fatty liver disease or fibrosis. In addition, we'll be able to monitor how your liver is doing over time. Is the scar accumulating at a rapid rate or is it kind of stabilized? Because it'll be very important to know your trajectory because each patient is so different. The good news is, is if you are told you have fatty liver, it is completely reversible. We can reverse it with weight loss and exercise that's been shown in various studies. Not only is fatty liver reversible, or just the fat in the liver reversible, but if you have scar or fibrosis from that fat, that too is reversible. So the most important thing is to know your how much fibrosis you have, and then we can track your response to the various interventions that we can work on together. And most importantly, fibrosis is reversible. We know that weight loss, dietary and lifestyle modifications can reverse fibrosis. Even early cirrhosis is reversible. However, once you reach the cirrhotic phase, and if you have cirrhosis for a prolonged period of time, there may become a point there where it is not reversible. So our goal is to help you before you get to that point.